Hey guys, welcome to my channel. So we are starting sectors of Indian economy, which is economic second chapter for grade ten students. So this chapter is to see economics in general is your basic idea. So it's actually very easy to learn this chapter. So let's get started with this chapter. Fine. So sectors of economic activities. Now we have three sectors like you guys have been studying since childhood: primary, secondary, and tertiary. Right. So these are the three types of sectors that we have. So prim primary in the sense, the base, right? Primary is the base for all the products that we subsequently make. So basically from plants, we make food. From cotton, we make clothes. From um, mines, we get the minerals, right? So these all are a primary product or these are the base which is required for the further processing. Okay, so for example, Cotton depends on natural factors like rainfall, sunshine, and climate. Dairy products, which is a biological process. So for dairy products like milk, cheese, and stuff, we rely on animals, right? We take their milk, which is actually a biological process that takes place in their body. We, that's also a natural process which is taking place. Minerals and ores are also natural process. When we produce a good goods by uh, exploiting natural resources okay so in some other the way we're actually exploiting uh, the natural things for the secondary tertiary uh, living thing for us okay since most of the natural products we get are from agriculture dairy fishing and forestry this structure uh, sector is also called agriculture and related sector so this is important one more question Okay, so since as I told, uh, it's all uh, depending on natural resources. It is a, it has another name, agriculture and related sectors. Okay, for example, we have uh, some onion and peas here, I guess. So that is a natural resources which we make for uh, using food. Cotton for clothes and stuff. Wheat, we process it to uh, wheat powder, right? Milk. Then coal for the refineries, the trees uh, for the furnitures we use. So these are all the primary sectors. The farmers or whoever is the person, they make this, right? Then it is passed on to the next level, which is secondary level. Okay, from here further to tertiary is going. So secondary se sector covers activities in which natural products are changed into other firms to ways of manufacturing that we associate with industrial activity okay now we got some process thing now that should be further processed to the consumers thing if uh, we get the milk from animal right uh, from the cow and then we can either process it to paneer or we can process it to cheese we can process it to ghee so these are all different categories and this is uh, made by different industries right so for the secondary development of that, we use secondary sector. So these are uh, discovers activities in which natural products are there, but then we have further manufacture it and then we set to the industry and stuff. For example, sugarcane as a raw material, we make sugar a good. It's basically the uh, jaggery type thing, right? We convert earth into bricks and use bricks to make house and buildings. Yeah, we take soil and then we make other bricks and then we fit that to a house and then that is on the earth itself. Yeah, since the sectors gradually become associated with different kinds of industry. So you guys can guess it. What is its name? Industrial sector. Okay, so uh, secondary structure after. Now see, I told you the vegetables we get, you have to cook it, right? Then you process it in your food. That's the tertiary part. Secondary part, you need to get them in your plates, right? Then we have uh, making the clothes. We make up uh, clothes and then we have to sell it. Selling is a tertiary part, but secondary is making. Then we make, uh, we uh, convert the rice and thing to the rice format, right? When In which we can just cook it. Then the shoes, car, um, tree got converted to the shed. Now that has to be sold by a manufacturer or a um, shopkeeper uh, to the people. And then that is a tertiary service there. Okay, so that is making us to the next sector, which is tertiary sector or service sector. So activities that help in the development of primary and secondary structures, which is basically like transportation, education, health service, um, 
selling and buying all this are coming under tertiary service so primary secondary structure would need to be transported by train or trucks and then sold in a wholesale and retail markets from that is going to the shops uh, malls shops etc transport and st- uh, transport storage communication banking trade are some of the examples of tertiary sectors you just have to know this is this basic thing that we all know from childhood right so since these activities generate services it's called service sector right we get our railway thing from the metals we got extracted then we're transporting it um then selling it we using computer we using for education you, you you guys are using some sort of gadget to see my video right so that is the tertiary sector okay what is written here economic activities though are grouped into highly uh, into three different uh, categories but they are highly independent independent okay now this is one of the questions that come okay this will be the question and then it will be like explain briefly in that case you write all these three things and explain okay so what happens uh, from the primary resources we have to make the natural things right then you have to process it to the consumers mode uh it can be either okay when you write examining uh, for economic questions trust me write examples it will crack up you will get the entire mark there okay explain with the example then we process it as a secondary sector and then it has to be transported to the shops and consumer should buy it and that is the third sector which is service sector or tertiary sector and just to show up something like you know write up this names like agriculture sector then industrial sector service sector so it gets a good image of the people okay so they are highly interdependent so let's see the next part um comparing three sectors so how will we compare or how will you know the gdp which is gross domestic product of a year or uh, how do you know which sector is having more productions coming so that is a criteria we'll check it out with an example comparing the three sectors every good or service that is produced and sold needs to be counted right it makes only sense to include the final goods and services take for instance a farmer who sells wheat to a flour mill for 20 per kg the mill grinds the wheat and sells the flour to biscuit company for 25 per kg the biscuit company uses the flour and things such as sugar oil to make four packets of biscuits it sells biscuits in the market to the consumers for rupees 80 which is 20 per packet the biscuits are the final goods and thus goods that reach the consumers the value of final goods already includes the value of all the intermediate goods that are using to make the final product now imagine if you add all these things individually it's going to be One twenty-five for four biscuits packets. So will anyone even buy that? Okay. So now just look at the difference between eighty and one twenty-five. Forty-five rupees extra. Does that even make sense? Because individually we're actually adding each value by each consumer is getting added. Like to the farmer, he gets this twenty thing, right? Processor gets a five percent uh, profit from it, and then after adding all this. 80 per packet 20 so then in all general that is profit for each of them individually and the total price is 80 which is reasonable price for a uh, four biscuit packets right so imagine if you add all of them it doesn't make sense only the final goods because all of them are been added until then to the final product right so the final value contains all the intermediate goods and that is only what should be compared to or that is what the price should be The value of final goods and services produced in each sector during a particular year provides the total production of the sector for that year. Understandable, right? And the sum of the production in each sector gives what is the gross domestic product. Uh, it can come for the full mark questions like MCQ type. Okay, so remember it: gross gross domestic product. It is the value of all the final goods and services produced uh, within a country during a particular year. Okay. and take a uh, task of measuring gdp is by the central government ministry so basically the sum of all the sectors or uh, to look after this is done by the central government ministry and then this thing or uh, this addition of all the values how many products are formed it is taken out or that thing is called gross domestic domestic product okay and that is the final product of value of all the goods and services produced within a year during a particular year 
ओके फाइन तो वट आर द हिस्टोरिकल चेंजेस आर टू प्लेस इन सेक्टर्स इन द सेंस विथ सेक्टर केम इन द फर्स्ट हाफ ऑफ द रूलिंग वेर द ब्रिटिश वेर रूलिंग अर्स वट हैपन अ दैट फेस विच वॉज द वन विच इज हैविंग मोस्ट ग्रोथ एंड सेकेंड हाफ वट वॉज हैपनिंग विच सेक्टर गेट्स वॉज गेटिंग मोर ग्रोथ राइट सो दिस इज वॉट वी आर ट्राइंग टू एक्सप्लेन हियर प्राइमरी सेक्टर वॉज वन ऑफ द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट सेक्टर ऑफ इंडियन इकोनॉमी राइट uh even now primary sector is important but then if you see people are more employed than what is required in primary sector right um it's like more people are there than it is required and still primary sector is one of the leading in india but still it was more during the colonial period where in british was ruling us due to the emergence of british many factories were set up and large number of people were employed under it leading to less significance for a primary sector and hence there was a shift from primary to secondary structure over years okay now towards the mid of year wherein we had this british companies coming up industries coming up for their goodness and people were hired there people moved from primary sector to secondary structure for their welfare for getting money right uh, so that more and more people get employed in it further there was a change from secondary to tertiary service has many people were employed under the service sector people started opting service sector even now people are opting like i chose to teach right that's a service sector then um if you are a doctor that's a service sector if you are engineer that's a service sector this all stuff wherein you are the third party of the show after everything that is where the service sector comes under and everyone here now educated and they're opting for the service sector itself so first it was primary there was a shift to secondary and then for the last it was a shift to tertiary okay fine primary secondary and tertiary sectors in india so this is of the year 2013 to 14 the tertiary sector has emerged as the largest producing sector in india replacing primary sector okay the prime, tertiary sector has emerged as the largest producing sector in india replacing primary sector if we can see this was uh, the pre colonial like um after we got independence during the late 90s okay you can see primary sector was uh, the highest secondary mid tertiary was again a bit high and now if you see primary sector uh, is least secondary mid tertiary is the highest but guys this is about the rupees that we are getting from this or the money we are getting supplied from this sort of things okay hold that for your mind i'll tell you another thing in a very quick way let's have a look on this why why is tertiary sector becoming so important guys you can itself answer this why are you opting to become um something that everyone respects right uh, are you opting to become a doctor are you opting to become an engineer are you preparing for neat j and stuff why are you doing it because you want a respectable job a very good job right that's why you're doing it and that is coming under tertiary sector in any country service uh, several service such as hospitals educational institutions post and telegraph services police station courts village administrative offices you don't have to remember them remember any two that's enough defense transport insurance companies banks etc required this can be considered as a basic service in a developing country the government has to take the responsibility for the provisions of this services okay now tertiary sector it comes uh, wherein we get service right like doctors and stuff has a tool so in such a sector um can everyone avail their opportunity are everyone getting a basic health service for this a government have to take initiative they have to give free services everywhere like if you want to see like there's a campaign set up uh, in remote areas so that the people get checkups right uh for the blood pressure diabetics and stuff they get their check up done so for those things not everyone will have money and if they don't have money they wouldn't go for this health would they see would people who are below poverty line opt for a meal or opt for healthcare service obviously they will try to fill their stomach right then setting up a healthcare uh, or going for a healthcare service they will try to fill their stomach they will work hard for that so in a developing country the government has to take responsibility they have to give free services and under free services people should be there like we need more doctors right for the healthcare services so in that case sector uh, tertiary sector service sector is increasing 
The development of agriculture industry leads to the development of services such as transport, trade, storage, and like so on. Okay. As income levels rise, certain sections of people start demanding many more services like eating out, tourism. Okay. Now, is there anyone who does not uh, go like at least once in a month out, right, for a movie, for shopping, for clothes, stuff, uh, eating out? You guys order, right? You go to school. You take up some classes like guitar sessions or you go for um, some sort of drawing class. All these things are for your entertainment. People started demanding more of entertainment opportunities. Okay. Use services such as those base of information, which is, which is basically IT services that also started coming by 2011 or then it started coming on. Okay. So these are some basic things that's given in your book. You can develop it. Or you can learn this as, as it is, understand it, write an exam. Okay? Uh, you don't have to remember this graph. Primary structure continues to be the larger employer even now. Okay. Now, this is what I, what I was trying to tell you guys previously. Right. So, this one is where we'll be getting most of the money from. And that is tertiary. But if you see where the people are highly employed, it still remains the same. Primary is in hand. That is the one which is giving the largest employment to everyone. Okay. So not enough jobs were created in the secondary and tertiary sectors. Even the production went up to nine times. Employment increased only three times in this sector. So it's understandable. Even though the money went up high, people are still less employed. Primary sector is overfilled. Even if some people are removed, there wouldn't be any effect or decrease in production. In other words, workers in the agricultural sector are, are at employed. Okay. So what happens is that um, people see if if a land to be cultivated and stuff, we just need five people, but the entire family is of ten and they can't find any other job. All these 10 people are getting shared. Their capability is getting shared, right? The ability is getting shared how much ever they can work or how much ever they can yield from the land. So not everyone is fully giving up their um, potentiality. So this is called underemployment. Take the case of small farmer, Lakshmi, this is given in a book, owning, owing uh, two hectares of unirrigated land dependent only on rain and green crops like Jowar and Ar Arhat. All five members of her family work in the plot throughout the year. Why? They have nowhere else to go for work. You will see that everyone is working. None remains idle. But in actual fact, uh, fact uh, the labor effort uh, gets divided. Each one is doing some work, but no one is fully employed. And this is a situation of underemployment, where people are apparently working, but all of them are made to work less than their potentiality. So whatever I told, they told in an example way. So this kind of unemployment is hidden in contracts with someone who does not have a job and is clearly visible as unemployment. And hence, it is also called as uh, disused un unemployment. Okay, so this is it. Like people are not getting the full potential. They're not putting the full efforts yet. They are working. So how to create more employment? You can learn this. Uh, how much is this? Six points like that itself. You get your mark. Okay, so the government can spend some money or banks, uh, some money or banks can provide loan, right? People can uh, take in money from loans and then they can uh, like put it back in a small amount uh, with interest, right? Bank will have less interest if, if see, this kind of small Lakshmi like farmers, they will actually go to money lenders, local money lenders, right? And they will charge a very high amount of interest, Rather than that, if bank give them a proper amount of loan, then they will they won't have to pay this interest. They just have to pay back the money which they took from the bank with a bit of interest. Yes, okay. So the government should invest some money in transportation, storage of crops, crops, and make uh, rural roads better. Okay. In India, the roads are full of holes, right? Like because of the rain, uh, different different climates that we have, it's not a proper road facility that we have. So government should take proper care about that. They should give good transportation so that if uh, the pulses or whatever is cultivated, they're not stored in a proper storage area. They will get spoiled. Uh, rats and that pesticide, all these things should be applied, right? The local bank should give credit at a reasonable rate. 
um and of interest or else they will have to borrow from money lender so that same thing which i told identify and promote local industry services in semi rural areas with where a large number of people can be employed so uh, put in new factories opening a cold storage area giving an opportunity for farmers to store their products like potatoes and onions and sell them when the price is good right storage and selling it when they will get the best of it children have to attend school we will require more buildings more teachers and other stuff okay now see in india more than half of the students who are of the age group where they have to study are not going to school and if people go to school we will need more teachers right we will need more schools creating more opportunity for employment according to earthwild planning commission known as ni uh, ti ayog ayog 20 lakh jobs would be created just in education sector can you guys imagine that like in um, everywhere people uh, prefer to teach wherever they, if they given opportunity they can access spread the knowledge to others right so that creates more job every state or region has potential for increasing the income and employment for people in that region okay it could be tourism or regional craft industry or it services proper planning and support from the government for example the same plan study of planning commission says that if tourism as sector is improved every year we can have an additional employment for that 35 lakh people why is tourism one of the best thing see when tourism increases the people uh, will have to be there in the tourist port to help the people right we need tourist guides we need uh, transporters we need drivers for that then uh, we need food services will people will opt to go to restaurants for eating the local food right so that they get the uh, taste of everything so this creates in general a lot of food work cool so the government should take su- such measures in order to increase the production increase their um money of their state right okay now for this uh, like we have some acts or rules of government itself implied the central government in india made a law implementing the right to work in about 250 uh, or 26 uh, 625 districts of india and it's called mahatma gandhi national rural employment guarantee act 2005 right so mg or uh, nreg you can remember this act uh, it is important this act or uh, certifies anyone who is unemployed 100 days of free work okay it is guaranteed work and if the government cannot give that they have to compensate it they have to give money for in terms of that okay and uh, the work which comes under is to modify the land right like cleaning the land uh, t- uh, like taking off the grass or maybe uh, gardening right so this kind of are the land jobs so this guys uh, give th- those kind of jobs in particular other kinds of jobs also are also given but these are the main jobs so work in rural areas a guarantee 100 days of work um in em- employment in nearby the government so they get money right so mainly what is it this question is important it can come okay fine now uh, sectors is divided right it's organized and unorganized it's further divided uh, again we'll be dividing it later on as public and private sector so as organized and unorganized uh, we'll read the this story which is going to work it's nice okay kanta works in a office she attends her office from 9:30 am to 5:30 pm she gets a salary regularly at the end of every month in addition to the salary she also gets provident fund as per the rules led by the government she also gets medis- medical and other allowances kanta does not go to office on sunday that's a paid holiday when she joined work she was given an appointment letter stating all the terms and conditions of the work now this is well organized right there are rules and regulation there are set of rules and regulation that employee and employer should follow kamal kamal is kanta's neighbor he is a daily wage laborer in a nearby grocery shop he goes to shop at 7:30 in morning and works till 8 pm every day he gets no other allowances apart from his wages he is not paid for the days he does not work he has therefore no leave or paid holidays uh, nor was he given any formal letter saying that he has been employed in the shop uh, he can be asked to leave any time by the employer this is unorganized whether the employer can do anything to the employee right if you want okay your job is over today that's it it's over Now let's see some of the differences which they have uh, in detail. 
so this these points remember them like separately i've written don't consider them as differences i just wrote it together okay so organized sector covers those enterprises or places of work where the terms of employment are regular and people are have assured work okay so people are given assured work they are registered by the government and have to follow its rules and regulations which are given in various laws such as fact, uh, factory law or factory act mineral wages act payment of gratuity act shops and establishment acts etc so they have to follow government policies and formal processes and procedures are there okay some of these people may not be employed by anyone but may work on their own okay and the start of people who want to um, be self employed or want to be their own Uh, have their own shops and stuff. They are self-employed, right? They have to follow the government uh, rules and regulations. They are expected to work only a few number of hours, a fixed number of hours. If they work more, they have to be paid over time by the employment. They get paid leave, payment during holidays, provident fund, and etc. They are supposed to get medical benefits and other laws. The factory managers have to ensure facilities like drinking water, safe clean environment when they retire. these workers get pensions and this is for the government uh, job only other private jobs they don't get uh, pensions and stuff they just get some money like towards the end of the service uh, they get some money in token so an organized sector small and scattered units which are largely outside the control of government there are rules and regulations but these are not followed jobs here are low paid and often not regular there's no provision for overtime paid uh, leave holidays leave due to sickness employment is not secure people can be asked to leave without any reason when there's less job such as during some seasons when some people may ask to leave right so see these are the basic things you have to uh, write it by yourself write an exam explain it in your words you guys have seen both kind of sectors right you have seen an organized sector you have seen an an organized sector write it down in your own language when you get your mark okay take help from these points and then develop your own answer okay now uh, in order to stop the exploitation of employer to the employee in a unorganized sector what can be done besides the need for more work there's also need for protection and support to the workers in unorganized sector farmers need to be supported to advocate facility for timely delivery of seeds agriculture and put scratch storage facilities and marketing outlets Small scale industry also needs government support for procuring raw material and marketing marketing of the output. The casual workers in both uh, rural and urban areas need to be protected. Workers from scheduled castes, uh, apart see these people, apart from uh, not getting like regular or the payment, they also face social discrimination uh, discrimination just because of the caste. Right. So these are some methods that can be used. Now, our last topic of this chapter. uh differentiation or sectors in terms of ownership which is basically public and private public for the people for the uh, which is done by the government right private private institutions private uh, setups that individually a human takes up government owns uh, most of the assets and provides all the services railway is a post office an example of the public sector government raises money through taxes and other ways to meet expenses of the services rendered okay so uh, the private sector may not continue the production or business unless government encourages it right is the government wants the private sector if if they're exploiting people then they can make it stop okay the government in india buys wheat and rice from farmers at fair price and this is stored in godowns and sells at a low price to consumers through ration shops like we have this bpl apl right those are ration shops running proper schools and providing quality education particularly elementary education it is a duty of the government so we need to give proper education to the people so that more people are getting employed and uh, more and more advanced when like people get to the tertiary sector government also needs to pay attention to the aspect of human development such as ability to save um, drinking water housing facilities for the poor and the food and the nutrition Okay, so private sector ownership of status and delivery of services is in the hands of private individuals or companies, uh, right? Uh, like Tata, and a steel company limited or Lens, right? Those are those are all private, uh, privately owned, and we have to pay money to re- these individuals and companies. Private sector will not provide at a reasonable cost. They will look for their profit, but then government can't do that. Okay, so guys, that is that. We're done with the chapter. Hopefully, you like my video. If you did. 
if it did help you do subscribe to my channel hit the like button and stay tuned till my next video comes uh, before i end the note uh, the notes for this lecture will be in the pdf format uh, in the description so take those and learn it and crack your exam and come back so thank you bye bye